Command Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, as requested by you, the men and women in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance, presented this week and every week, till you're home from the hospitals and back from over there. Hello, gang. This is High Everback, raising the curtain on another Command Performance. Another 30 minutes of the kind of stuff you ask for in those letters to Old Command, Care of Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. And running the show tonight is a wonderful guy from radio, stage, and screen, loyal friend of Armed Forces Radio and star of Rogue's Regiment, it's Vincent Price. Thanks a lot. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, Vincent. I'm glad to be working with you tonight. You know, you're a popular guy. You're what they term plenty big box office. That's right. Just call me B.O. Plenty. <laughs> well, Vincent, it's swell of you to come to do this show when I know you plan to spend the evening at home with your old granddad. With, uh, old granddad. Yes, that's one of the famous high prices. Yeah. I don't understand that, do you? No. <laughs> well, now, about your movies, Vince, seems to me that in every picture you've done lately, you go around knifing beautiful women or strangling pretty girls. Oh, yes, Hyde, I'm so tired of that. I'd like to forget knifing and stabbing for a while. I'd like to invite girls over for dinner and poison the food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet it gets pretty tiresome. Well, I'll say. You know, but in my next picture, things will change. I do a love scene with gorgeous Rita Hayward. Oh. Wonderful. Yeah, I meet Rita in a romantic garden beside a moonlight pool. Yes? Yeah, and I lift her in my arms and I hold her close, and her curves are as round as an Alka Seltzer tablet. <laughs> yes? Yeah, we melt into a passionate kiss, a burning kiss. She murmurs, Darling, you're wonderful. You set me on fire. Yeah, yes, and, and then? Then the natural thing, I drop her in the water and listen to her fizz. <laughs> Well, that's beautiful, Vincent. Beautiful. And now, what's the first order of business on Old Command? Well, hi, we've had lots of mail asking for a top capital recording star. She rose to the top with Charlie Barnett and Joe Venuti. She's one of the brightest musical stars of the day. That's the popular and beautiful K Star. Thank you, Vincent, and hi, you guys and gals. Well, this is for the gang at the Naval Hospital in Philadelphia, PA. It's an old classic we just recorded, and it's called A Faded Summer Love. Remember, it goes something like this. <laughs> Leaves come tumbling down around my head. Some of them are brown, some are red. They're to see but reminding me of a faded summer love swaying high above in the tree they were so in love with the autumn wind brings them to the end of a faded summer love. I'm like the poor leaves that swayed with the breeze. I thought that life was Tried hard to please, then swept me off my feet. Summer a morning dew turns to frost, leaves that once were new pay the cost. They're beautiful to see. Reminding me of a faded summer
Wonderful, wonderful, Kay. Don't run away. And now, Vincent, what's next on the command performance agenda? Well, hi, you know, a lot of very fine programs originate at AFRS stations all over the globe, as well as in Hollywood. Well, I did one in Japan myself, you know. I was a disc jockey and called myself Tokyo Moe's. <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, tonight, Command Performance wants to tell the world about another great program. All right. Uh, this one was originated by Virgil Brennan at station WXLH on Okinawa. Oh, yes. It's called the Dear John Club of the Air. And if, <laughs> if Virgil Brennan doesn't mind, we'd like to let the whole gang in on a capsule version of his show. It starts with uh, sentimental poetry. Love is like an onion. You taste it with delight. And when it's gone, you wonder... Whatever made you bite? <laughs> Good evening, lovers. Welcome to the Dear John Club of the Air. Another soiree dedicated to the reading of those tear-stained letters mailed to the guys who left their faithful sweethearts sobbing at the picket fence and then got the gate by airmail. <laughs> As the poet said... I promise you a faithful heart until our romance ends. And even though we're far apart, we're still the best of friends. She took my hand with loving care. She took my costly flowers rare. She took about all that I could buy, and then she took the other guy. Boy, they did. <laughs> Yay, Verily Brothers, welcome to our little theater of two times squares. <laughs> Miss June Foray is about to render a letter written to a dear John by a girl back in Schenectady. The footlights dim, and she speaks her heart. Dear John, received another letter from you today, my darling. I should have answered it long ago. But there's something that's awfully hard to tell you. Oh, John, we were gay when we parted. You said, I'm sure your heart will always be true. And I said, my heart will be true. But if you're gone too long, the rest of me may stray a little. <laughs> John, when I say you're the only one I will ever truly, truly love. But you'd better not make your letters quite so passionate. If I left them unopened, Bob would understand. But I can't say the same for Bertram, Harry, Peter, Sam, Manny, Moe, or Jack. <laughs> Especially Jack. He's my husband. <laughs> Yours truly, Gwendolyn. Oh, P.S. I am retaining the Japanese yen you sent me. Also the hand-carved coconut husk. But I am keeping the money for sentimental reasons. <laughs> and that, friends, is the idea of Virgil Brennan's Okinawa program. Uh, only he does it with lots of music and genuine letters. Hey, speaking of music and letters, hi... We have lots of orders from a, for a visit from a fellow who used to work for AFRS when he wore a cocky suit. Always ready and willing to visit the hall, it's that musical sensation, the young man with the harp, Robert Maxwell. Robert Maxwell plays his original composition he recently recorded for Columbia. It's Shangri-La. <laughs>
Thank you very much, Robert Maxwell. That was fine. And now, Vincent, suppose we answer a flood of orders. Right. In honor of all the gang on the bedside networks, as well as our listeners all over the world, we're proud to present a gal everybody seems to love, the queen of comedy, the one and only Joan Davis. Well, thank you and hiya, gang. Uh, friend... Let's peek into Joan's, uh, <laughs> Joan's private life. As we look in on Joan, she's walking down a Hollywood street when she meets Hi Averbach and she gives him a startling bit of information. What? You mean you're giving up the entertainment business? Joan, you can't mean it. Yes, I do. I'm just too terribly bored with it all. Imagine Clark Gable taking you out dancing every night, Walter Pigeon taking you to dine every night, Van Johnson romancing you. Well, do they? No, that's why I'm so terribly bored with it all. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try selling Dr. Schultz's health tonic from door to door. It's a great rejuvenator. Oh, does it work? Why, hi, one bottle of Schultz's health tonic is supposed to make you ten years younger. In fact, any customer who buys eight bottles gets a set of diapers free. <laughs> No kidding. Uh, how much is it? Well, it comes in three sizes. Uh, for a quarter, you get a pint. For 50 cents, a whole quart. And for two dollars, they pipe it right into your home through the plumbing system. <laughs> uh, well, if you'll excuse me, hi, here goes for the first store. Uh, good luck, Joni. Yeah? Uh, how do you do? I'm selling Dr. Schultz's health tonic. It's good for anything that ails you. It cures rheumatism, bronchitis, bursitis, neuralgia, St. Vitus dance, and Johnson's d disease. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Those others... Uh, huh? I said those others I've heard of, but what is this Johnson's disease? <laughs> uh, well, Johnson hasn't discovered one yet, but in case he does, we're ready for him. <laughs> Now, how many bottles would you like? I wouldn't buy a bottle of Dr. Schultz's health tonic if you paid me. It's no good. It's terrible. It's horrible. How can you say that? How can I say it? I'm Dr. Schultz. <laughs> oh, well, I'll try the next door. Yes? Uh, <laughs> how do you do? I, I'm selling Dr. Schultz's health tonic, the best builder up around the market. You better hurry up and get yours. There are only two billion bottles left. Oh, <laughs> is it really any good? Good, why, it's guaranteed to give you muscles you never had before. Uh, just let me read you this testimonial sent in by Mrs. B.W. of Cleveland. She says, um, since giving my daughter Harriet some of your health tonic, she's so built up, she's not like our little Harriet anymore. In fact, now we call her Harry. <laughs> that bottle. Oh, it contains iron, liver, and vitamins. Seems like a very good tonic. But my dear, you're the one who looks so horribly run down. <laughs> I do. Why, yes, look at those ugly circles under your eyes. How pale your face is and, and you're breathing so fast. Mm -hmm. What you need is a good health tonic like Dr. Schultz is here. I do? Give me that bottle. Here you are. <laughs> Thanks, and here's your quarter. Goodbye. <laughs> Wait a minute. What am I doing? If I make any more sales like that, I'll go broke. Well, here's one more house. Yes? Uh, how do you do? I have a proposition for you. Oh, you do, honey? Well, come right on in. <laughs> it's not that kind of a proposition. <laughs> Uh, mister, uh, this is a wonderful health tonic, honest. Good for reducing. It'll take some of that muscle off your bustle. Now, listen, I'm streamlined like a new Nash. I don't have a spare tire in front. No, but you've got a great big bumper in the rear. <laughs> now, look, that's enough, sister. I'm a busy man. Scram, go on, get lost. Oh, gee, mister, but, 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 how do you like that? He butted me out. <laughs> hey, 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 wait a minute. 
Aren't you Joan Davis? Oh, yes, and, and you're Vincent Price. We did a show together last year. Yeah. And you haven't changed a bit. You're the same slim, nice-looking fellow you were last year. Oh, gee, thanks, Joan. You haven't changed a bit either. Really? Yeah, well, better luck next year. <laughs> You don't look very happy. Is there something wrong? Yeah, I'm just bored with it all. Oh, I know your trouble. You should be out with some boyfriend. This is the kind of day for love, romance. It is? Yeah. <laughs> Certainly. Why, even my little cuckoo hasn't come out of the clock every hour like he used to. Why not? He's in there with another cuckoo. <laughs> Well, Vincent, don't get me wrong. I'm not against being romance, but I don't think the fellas I know would be interested. Oh, sure they would. After all, fellas are just the same as girls. They are? Then I wouldn't be interested. <laughs> and anyway, Vince, I I'm just tired of the entertainment business. That's why I've decided to sell this tonic from door to door. Well, door to door selling is awful tough. I know. I used to go around selling nylon stockings to women. You did? Yeah, and sometimes if the woman was really friendly, I'd even put the stockings on for her. Oh, well, gosh, you must have made some sales then, huh? Uh, my legs look terrible in nylon stockings. <laughs> Joni, you know, you can't quit the entertainment business. The movies need you. Ah. Uh, yeah, command performance gets piles of mail asking for you to appear. Ah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to work in a drama with you. Ah. Uh, we could do a mad, passionate love scene where I could hug you tight and shower you with hot, flaming kisses. Ah. Uh, uh? <laughs> Look at the letters we get about you, Joan. Huh? Here's one that says, we love you, and it's signed Sergeant L.Y.D. And here's one from uh, Private I.A.P. and a couple from Corporals I.N. and K.H.A. and one from Master M.S. in Berlin. Ah, uh, L.Y.D., I.A.P., I.N., K.H.A., M.S. Put them all together and what do you got? Lydia Pinkham's. <laughs> It's just no use, I guess. Oh, no, you can't desert. Joan, Hollywood needs your smooth, lovely, beautiful wit. Your bright, sparkling, pointed face. Joan, <laughs> say you'll remain in pictures, and I'll teach you the Stanislavski method of acting. So who's the switchy? Stanislavski. Well, that's where you let the audience know that you feel what you see. I feel what I see? Yeah. That's not Stanislavski. That's the Navy method. <laughs> Also, Joan, I see that I'll see that you get to do a great picture. Yeah. I'll introduce you to Daryl F. Zanuck, although he's playing polo today. Oh, then he won't be at the office, huh? Oh, yeah, he'll be there. It's a very big office. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I see. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> and uh, you'll get to do any picture you want to do. Now, uh, tell me, what great classic would you like to appear in? Well, um, if you'll pardon the expression, Naked City. <laughs> We could so show it with selected shorts. <laughs> oh, but Joey, look, that picture was already made. It shows a day in the life of several people in New York. Oh, well, that's right. And I want to apply the same documentary technique to Hollywood instead of New York. Hey, that sounds great. Let's try it. Swell, Vincent. We'll rip the veil off Hollywood and show it as another naked city. Oh, Hollywood. City of glamour, where every movie star on her wedding day looks her new husband over carefully to make sure. Make sure of what? Make sure she's never married him before. <laughs> Well, Joan, we'll dive into your undying drama in a moment. Right now, here's Kay the Star, ready with, uh... With something I'd like to present in honor of the heroes of the Berlin Airlift. It's a copy of one of my earlier recordings on the lonesomest gal in town. Maestro, Pierre Air. <laughs> No angel child ever called me dear Got no honey man for me to cuddle near But I'm learning to roll my eyes And someday you may be surprised When I find someone's loving man And kiss him with a smack I'll hug him and I'll squeeze him But I'll never give him back Cause I'm lonesome So very lonesome I'm the lonesomest gal In this here town If you should hear that gal was me And if you see my picture in the paper 
gonna save a gal from her grave. Find me a man if you can. I'm the lonesomest gal in town. Everybody is throwing me down. I got no angel child to ever call me dear. I got no honey man for me to cuddle near. But I'm learning. I'm gonna roll my eyes. And someday you're gonna be surprised. When I find someone's loving man and kiss him with a smack. I'll hug him and I'll squeeze him, but I'll never give him back. Cause I'm lonesome. So very lonesome. I'm the lonesomest gal. Well, that was wonderful, Kay. Wonderful. You're really great. And now for our feature dramatic presentation, in which impresario Joan Davis gives Hollywood the documentary treatment. The curtain goes up as the picture begins. Presenting a stark, smashing, realistic drama, the Hollywood version of The Naked City, entitled... <laughs> the Sunset Strip. This is Hollywood at two in the morning, a town about to go asleep. Everywhere little dramas are taking place. As the bar on Vine Street closes, a man stares in the mirror at his bleary bloodshot reflection and resolves never to go to a bar again. Television is ruining his eyes. <laughs> Swank Hollywood spot, a wrinkled, worn-out, frowsy scrub woman mops the floor. A glamorous, beautiful movie star about to leave stops in front of the scrub woman and stares at her. Suddenly, there's a cry of, Mother! And the scrub woman takes her mother in her arms. <laughs> the night wears on, and Hollywood prepares for bed. Look over the city. The lights go out in Spencer Tracy's house. Now the lights go out in Ronald Coleman's house. And now the lights go on in Jack Benny's house. <laughs> He'll have to read by his own lamp now. <laughs> the Colemans prepare to retire. They take off their shoes. Good night, Ronnie and Benita. And in the Harry James household, they're getting ready to retire now. Good night, Harry and Betty. And in another Beverly Hills home, a famous couple prepares to retire. Good night, Trigger and Roy. <laughs> yes, these are the stars. And in other parts of the town, there are the ones who are still on the way up. <laughs> turn, turn the camera there, over there on that young, promising actor. This is his story. Yes, this is young Vincent Price's story. Oh, gosh, Betty, I'm so unhappy. Oh, Vincent, don't feel so badly. Maybe next year it will be your turn to win the Oscar. Oh, I just don't get parts like that Ronald Coleman. I could have done what he did in Double Life. Listen. I love you, Cynthia. I swear I'll always be true to you, Mary. It's you I love, Mary, and I'll always love you, Cynthia. <laughs> not double life, it's double wife. <laughs> yes, Cynthia, all those nights I spent restlessly tossing, trying to think of another way out, but this is the only way. Tonight you sleep there so soft and warm and innocent, but by morning they will find you lying there cold and stiff. Yes, Cynthia, tonight is my turn to use the electric blanket. <laughs> to use, Betty, I'll never win an award. Oh, but Vincent, darling, your career isn't everything. We have a more important role in life to play, husband and wife. And maybe in a few years, father and mother to nine or ten children. Well, the feature sounds okay, but can't we cut down on the coming attractions? <laughs> Besides, Betty, I can't get married till I become a big star. Well... If your mind is made up, I... I might as well tell you. Your studio called this morning. 
They have a part for you opposite Olivia Marsh. Gee, that glamorous Olivia Marsh. Yes, and now you'll forget all about me. Me forget about my little Betty just because I'll be kissing Olivia's luscious lips and holding that gorgeous figure in my arms and me forget my little... Hey, what's your name, kid? <laughs> now, look, now remember, Betty, kissing Olivia will just be part of my work. Work, huh? Well, Olivia's not the only one who can kiss. Take this to work with you. Here. <laughs> There. Well. See, if you could put that up in a box lunch, you'll make a fortune. <laughs> it's six in the morning now. The garbage trucks are rumbling out to Beverly Hills to pick up the dirty money. <laughs> In the railroad yards, freight trains are pulling out, filled with California oranges for Florida. <laughs> and from Florida, freight trains are pulling in, filled with oranges for California. Yes, for some, the day is about to begin. But for others, like in this brightly lit room in a hospital. Ready, doctor? Yes, nurse. Clamps. Clamps. Suture. Suture. Wire. Wire. Tape. Tape. There you are, Mr. Jolson. You're ready for another day's work. <laughs> It's nine o'clock now, and the activity of a busy city has begun. Lines are already forming outside the unemployment insurance office. <laughs> the drug stores are getting ready to serve breakfast to thousands. They're chilling the eggs and putting lipstick around the coffee cup. <laughs> And the children of Hollywood are starting their day. The same as children in your own little town. It doesn't take much to make them happy. Little Margaret O'Brien is smiling because she's just been given a new set of blocks. Wilshire, north to Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> but back to the story of one person among these millions, Vincent Price. He reaches the studio and walks down toward the dressing rooms. He has to see the young and lovely Miss Olivia Marsh about his part. Oh, gee, I hope Miss Marsh is in. Oh, gosh, she looks beautiful in pictures. I bet she's even lovelier in real life. Come in. I'm a... Oh, are you Miss Marsh? I thought you were a younger woman. I was. <laughs> I'm uh, just a little older than my fans think. My fans think. <laughs> uh, but I must keep my real age a secret. Do you think it's leaking out? Leaking out? Run for your lives, boys. The dam's the first. <laughs> well, I'll admit I'll never see 22 again. Well, it's just as well. You couldn't recognize it after all. <laughs> well, in movies, it's the makeup that counts, you see. In fact, I was just getting myself beautiful. I do it with those five jaws of makeup. I've already used four of them. Well, that fifth one must be a pip. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't care who my leading lady is. This is my big chance. I've got to be nice to her. I'll show you how I feel about you. Let me kiss your hair. And your fingertips. And your little eyelashes. Come away from the dressing table and kiss me. <laughs> You're mine. Do you understand? Oh, but my kisses and my heart belong to another. You'd be getting just a hollow shell. At my age, you don't ask if the house is furnished. You just move right in. <laughs> So we go on with the story. Vincent walks to the set. The script girl hands him a script. In comes the director, Misha Goss, who has... <laughs> who has just finished making the great murder mystery, I Dismember Mama. <laughs> Suave, continental manner, he says. Quiet, everybody, quiet! Stop the 
start whispering. How can I hear myself shout? Where is everybody? Where is my cameraman? Where is my script girl? Where is my star? Here I am. Where is my prop man? Here I am. Well, what are you waiting for? Prop or up? <laughs> Where's my leading man? Here I am. You? I know we are practicing economy, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Now, our story takes place in a typical American community in Oslo, Sweden. <laughs> You're a farmer. You've been working hard in the fields, and you are tired and hungry. Miss Marsh, your wife, meets you at the door. You look at her face, and suddenly you are not tired anymore. I'm not hungry anymore. Quiet. <laughs> understand the scene. You are poor. Your children are sick and you have no money for medicine. Now give me emotion. Emotion, please. Emotion. Okay. Greta. Yeah, ja, Helvig. <laughs> Greta, you haven't been keeping the house very clean. I noticed several things crawling around the floor. Please, Helvig, those are our children. <laughs> That's what they are. I thought they were mice. Yeah, I know. I saw you uh, set those traps for them. <laughs> wait, wait, please. A little emotion. Emotion. Oh, all right, all right. Great. No wonder the children look that way. They're sick. They need medicine. And we are very poor. We cannot afford cod liver oil, whatever we do. We must have cod liver oil. Wherever can we get cod liver oil? Mr. Vincent, I want emotion, not emulsion. <laughs> now, now the climax of the scene. You kiss your wife. I have to kiss. Well, all right. My heart is young, Finn. <laughs> Let me kiss you, Greta. Uh, Oh. Well, well, what are you waiting for? I can't find a mouth. It's the middle wrinkle with the lipstick around it. <laughs> well, I, I want to kiss you. Jesus, oh. for heaven's sake, kiss you, kiss you, will you? I want to kiss you, I... Fame and fortune are waiting for you. Now kiss. All right. <laughs> Not me, you fool. Get off this bed. Run it by me. And so, 24 hours in Hollywood comes to a close. And again, the city prepares for sleep. One by one, the stars go to bed. In the home of one beautiful star... Good night, Greer Garson. And in another... Good night, Hetty Lamar. And in the home of still another beautiful star... Good night, Esther Williams. <laughs> Thanks a million, Joan. That was a wonderful way to bring another command to a close. Well, it was fun. What with the expert presence of one high, Averback, and the acting of Bud... Averback, Averback. Averback? <laughs> Back, upside down, anyway. <laughs> of Bud Whittem and June Ferre, and then that wonderful Vincent Price. So long, Vincent. Oh, now, wait, not so fast, Joni. Hmm? You know, we weren't kidding earlier when we said that the people all love you. And for proof of that, here's a word from Colonel R.E. Carney, the commandant of Armed Forces Radio. Yes, Joan, Vincent's very right. We have here a letter from AFN. That's the European network of AFRS, telling of a poll they took of all their listeners to choose the most outstanding stars in the programs presented by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Joan, it's with a great deal of pleasure that in behalf of AFN, we present you with this plaque. It's a skillfully made token, hand carven by Bavarian woodcutters. We know that you received many outstanding awards, but none, I'm sure, conveyed more heartfelt appreciation for your marvelous work. And so, Joan, here it is, the Kilroy Award. <laughs> jo 
Jones. This is inscribed to Joan Davis, chosen the outstanding comedian by the men of the European Theater. It's just wonderful. It's, it's great. And, gosh, how can I ever thank the boys? Uh, Joan, you know, uh, I like you, too. <laughs> well, Vincent, I, I've enjoyed working with you. Well, Joanie, must the evening end here? Joan, come with me to Ciro's. We'll have hummingbirds' wings on rye crisp and Paul Masson champagne. <laughs> oh, I... No, Vincent, uh, not, not champagne. Why not? Well, champagne makes my head spin. <laughs> oh, that's silly. Then we dance the rumba together. Now you got everything spinning, ain't you? <laughs> oh, well, good night, Helvig. Good and good night, boys. And thank you. Thank you. This program was arranged with the aid of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.